We start with a point. Hi, it's Rob Bryant, and welcome back once again to the Imagining the Tenth Dimension video blog. Today we're going to talk about electrons, which are point-like particles. Uh, so Jason has me done up as an electron, uh, kind of. And of course, one of the unique properties of electrons is they can jump from position to position in space. Sometimes they can even be in two places at once. And we're discussing the poll questions that have been happening at the Imagining the Tenth Dimension video blog. Uh, today we're looking at poll 27. And the question was, Feynman was right. There is really only one electron in the universe, whizzing backwards and forwards within timelessness. And the trillions of identical electrons we see at any now are just that single electron over and over again. As you can see, the jury was so close on this one that we should probably just declare it a tie. This poll question was connected to a number of blog entries created around the same time, some of which I'll link to at the end of this entry. When Michio Kaku's book, Physics of the Impossible, introduced me to Feynman's fascinating idea, I felt a strong resonance because it fits so nicely into the general thrust of this project. What I've been trying to get people to imagine is that there is a way of viewing and understanding reality which is outside of time and space, where everything happens simultaneously and all possible outcomes exist as potential. As mystical as that concept may appear to be, there are sound scientific reasons for supporting such an idea. And if ancient mysticism and modern cosmology happen to agree on something, doesn't that only strengthen the argument for this being the truth? There have also been some news stories lately that ask this question, do you believe in God or do you believe in the multiverse? And if you're reading along in the, uh, the blog entry, uh, by the way, I do provide a link to the text version of this blog in the description here at YouTube, if that's where you're watching. I provide a link to a story that uh, is about this God or the multiverse question. Let's look at the opening paragraphs of this article, which was written by Mark Vernon. I'm quoting now from Mark. Is there a God or a multiverse? Does modern cosmology force us to choose? Is it the case that the apparent fine-tuning of constants and forces to make the universe just right for life means there is either a need for a tuner or else a cosmos in which every possible variation of these constants and forces exists somewhere? This choice has provoked anxious comment in the pages of this week's New Scientist. It follows an article in Discover magazine in which science writer Tim Folger quoted cosmologist Bernard Carr. If you don't want God... You'd better have a multiverse, is what Dr. Carr said. Even strongly atheistic physicists seem to believe the choice is unavoidable. Steven Weinberg, the closest physics comes to a Richard Dawkins, told the eminent biologist, If you discovered a really impressive fine-tuning, I think you'd really be left with only two explanations. A benevolent designer or a multiverse. Imagining the tenth dimension, of course, fondly embraces the idea of a multiverse. The many worlds interpretation is first proposed by physicist Hugh Everett III, and ultimately a concept known as the omniverse, which blends together the many varying ways that the term multiverse can be used. It also places this quixotic goal for itself. Is it really necessary to choose between God and the multiverse? Is there not a way where both can be shown to be different ways of describing the same thing? And uh, I'd like to provide some links here to some of my past blog entries, which explore the idea of everything being connected together, in the same way that Feynman fancifully imagined there being only one electron zooming back and forth within timelessness. Elvis and the Electrons. A point within the Omniverse. You are me, and we are all together. That's all for today. Our next blog entry is going to be Polls Archive 28. And the question in that one was, have you ever seen an aura? My name's Rob Bryanton. That's all for today from the Imagining the Tenth Dimension video blog. Enjoy the journey. Hi friends, just a reminder that you can now buy a six DVD set of my video blogs at tenthdimension.com store.